Speedway, the world's fastest half mile tonight, becomes the world's largest college football stadium. The ball walk is a sea of orange. Tennessee a little loose in the turns in the opener, hoping to show some championship horsepower tonight. While Virginia Tech is under a new regime, and we'll find out just what the Hokies have under the hood. Tennessee, Virginia Tech in the Battle of Bristol. Also want to know from the SEC, Reese Davis and Kirk Herbstreet here. Chris Fowler working the U.S. Open tonight. Kirk, Tennessee comes in here after dropping eight spots in the AP poll. Second largest drop for a team coming off a win, and it's because they weren't impressive. And the question about the Vols, how do they handle a big stage? This is a big stage. First of all, welcome aboard, my man. Glad to be here. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, Tennessee got off to a slow start to the season. I think it had as much to do with their attitude. I don't think they showed up mentally really respecting Appalachian State. I think you're going to see a whole different team tonight led by their quarterback, Josh Dobbs. It's a team that, that last year went 9-4. and four. They, they returned 17 starters. An offense looked great the last seven weeks, and it was because of Dobbs' ability to run and throw. I think you'll see him more involved tonight in the running game, maybe up to 10 to 12 carries to night for him. I think he's got weapons around him. Jalen Hurd, one of the best backs in the SEC. Josh Malone, a guy who can get downfield vertically. And Virginia Tech and Bud Foster will attack this Tennessee offense. I think they have the ball's attention. I think you're going to see a whole different team than what you saw last week. A Bud Foster lunch pail defense. We're familiar with that. Virginia Tech on offense is going to look completely different now under new head coach Justin Fuente. Well, Justin Fuente is a great offensive mind. It's probably why he got the job. Uh, you go back to his years at Memphis as a head coach. Before that, offensive coordinator for Gary Patterson at TCU. Remember Andy, Andy Dalton uh, played for him. His system is very familiar with college football fans because he spreads the field out and he had loves to attack downfield uh, with wide receivers and he's got some experience with Isaiah Ford the thing tonight we're gonna find out does he have the quarterback Gerard Evans comes from the junior college ranks honestly this is his first real feel of big-time college football how will he respond to adversity he's got the tools but can he deal with the adversity in a ball's defense it's determined to make him prove that he can move the ball against the SEC defense you know Gerard telling us yesterday he's an emotional guy sometimes it takes him a little bit to settle down into a game and there's gonna be plenty of energy at this event tonight the battle at Bristol these two schools really aren't that far apart despite the fact that they don't play that often if you're not familiar with where Bristol is it sits right on the Tennessee and Virginia State line almost equidistant Bristol Motor Speedway from Blacksburg to Knoxville now they had a NASCAR race here less than three weeks ago and it took 19 days for the transition they had to bring in truckloads of gravel to raise the infield and then roll out the AstroTurf AstroTurf 3D by the way how big is this place you could fit the big house from Michigan inside it or if you prefer baseball maybe you want to see a double header you could see Fenway Park on the left and Wrigley Field on the right. That's how huge this place is tonight. It is built for racing, and if we're built for racing, we need pit reporters like Dr. Jerry Punch. Hey, thank you very much, Reese. Hello, everyone. Folks, think about it. Just over three weeks ago, where I'm standing was an asphalt parking lot filled with stock cars and semi-tractor trailers, but within seven hours of waving a checkered flag, the dump trucks began to roll. 450 trucks filled with gravel raised this area about three and a half feet. Then they put a layer of sand on top with heavy equipment to level it. Then they rolled out this high-tech rubber mat called Nike Grind made up of ground-up football cleats. How cool. And then on top of that, 101,000 square feet of turf with with every five yards having to be hand stitched together and they covered it all with 360,000 pounds of sand and composite now normally it would take 25 days for that project to be completed these folks here did it in 10 days so how about that a record-setting construction project paving the way for a record-setting crowd speaking of crowds my man Marty Smith hanging out with people who are wearing different shades of orange 
Doc, thank you. Good evening. For 20 years, I've made fun of Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. for showing up to work in glorified onesie adult pajamas. Now look at us. Welcome to an event 20 years in the making. Back in the mid-90s, former Bristol Motor Speedway general manager Jeff Bird had an idea. Tennessee Volunteers, Virginia Tech Hokies, Bristol Motor Speedway, because as Reese mentions, this track is basically a center point between the two campuses. But some politics got in the way. Some of the folks down at Tennessee didn't like the idea that the most watched game in Tennessee history wouldn't take place at Neyland Stadium. Ultimately, common sense prevailed because of the success of events like the Carrier Classic in college basketball, and the Winter Classic in hockey. So here we are. We have Hokies. We have Vols. Gentlemen, start your engines. Marty, I believe that the ladies have already started their engines <laughs> just behind you, and it reminded me that they did buy 545,000 beers to sell at this event. It, did they? Tonight. I, yeah. I think I know where 20 of them went. <laughs> <laughs> look at the battle at Bristol by, by the numbers. 236 miles between these two and these two teams getting set to clash here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats and veterans render a hand salute as Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter Jennifer Nettles honors America with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the What a way to get things started. Battle at Bristol, not too far away. Tennessee and Virginia Tech on Saturday Night Football. Rush with Stan Verrett, Mac Brown, and Mark May is next. After this message and a word from our ABC stations. percent APR for 72 months plus $500 bonus cash. Hello, I'm Jimmy Haslam, CEO of Pilot Flying J. My father opened his first gas station in Gate City, Virginia in 1958. We now have over 650 travel centers spread throughout North America, ready to serve drivers as they hit the road each day, whether it's a family on vacation or a professional driver delivering goods across our great country. On behalf of our 24,000 team members, we thank you for watching what we think will be a game you'll remember, the Pilot Flying J Battle at Bristol. They say when the rider burns you, he burns your soul. of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ghost Rider, Tuesday, September 20th, New Time, 10, 9 Central, ABC.
Do nothing, and you may as well lend a hand. But if you or someone you know is in an abusive relationship, make the call. There's something out there. Something stirring. Something wild. Introducing the wild family of instant games from the Tennessee Lottery. Went up to a half million dollars. Out of nowhere. Only from the Tennessee Lottery. Game-changing fun. Flexible? Not flexible. With the Advanced Financial Flex Loan, you're in control of the payments. Pay a little or pay a lot. You decide. Flexibility is good. Sports Extra, Sunday nights at 1035 only on News 2. <laughs> hey, Mark, you look like Derek's little brother. <laughs> it happens to everyone. It's the Derek Henry effect. What's up, Derek? So. Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Welcome into our ABC studio. Stan Verrett along with Mac Brown and Mark May getting you ready for all the action from Bristol. Already had a crazy ending in the Central Michigan-Oklahoma State game from earlier today. Cooper Rush drops back to pass, heaves one up deep, caught by Jesse Kroll, who laterals it to Corey Willis, a play that shouldn't have happened because it came after an intentional grounding call. And you're right, it shouldn't have happened, but what a terrific job of executing a play like this on the final play of the game, Coach. Yeah. Give credit to Central Michigan. They played really well, but it's a shame that human error changed the outcome of this game. Gave the Chippewas an untimed down when they shouldn't have after the intentional grounding call on fourth down. Troy taking on Clemson. This was a game. Deshaun Watson, in the end, helped his team pull it out. It's Deion King for the touchdown there. Clemson wins 30 to 24. Nichols and Georgia. Uh, the Bulldogs had more trouble with the Colonels than they had with North Carolina last week. <laughs> Lorenzo Carter, 24 yard fumble return. Some more modest numbers for Nick Chubb in this game as Georgia wins 26 24. Jalen Hurts, first true freshman to start for Alabama at quarterback since 1984. 287 yards, pair of touchdowns for him. DeAndre Francois, three more touchdown passes. Florida State beats the Charleston Southern. Our game, Coach, who wins? I think Tennessee wins because they've been around longer. They got more older, experienced football players. Going to be a great defensive battle. Somebody probably going to win the kicking game. I think Tennessee wins this game because they have more talent than Virginia Tech and because they have more experienced staff with the talent that they have. Joshua Jobs, a Tennessee quarterback, has to play much better in this game than he did last game. All right. We'll see you at the half. Time to drop the green flag with Reese Davis and Kirk Herbstreit. All right, Stan, and the Virginia Tech fans are certainly ready for that as we continue here at Bristol Motor Speedway. More than 150,000 will be here. We have a representative from the Guinness Book of World Records to document the crowd, but really all that's going to matter for Derek Barnett in Tennessee, the 22 are on the field at any given time. This guy is an elite pass rusher, 20 sacks in two years. He's only 12 shy of Reggie White's career record at Tennessee. He'll be getting after Gerard Evans. This has been the Nissan pregame rush kickoff from Bristol is coming up next. And now a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. I bet he's dreaming of puppies. Mm -hmm.
on any road with intuitive all-wheel drive. The Nissan Rogue, Murano, and Pathfinder. Now get 0% APR for 72 months plus $500 bonus cash. What's it like to be in good hands? Like finding new ways to be taken care of. Home, car, life insurance, obviously. Oh. But with added touches, you can't get everywhere else, like claim free rewards or safe driving bonus checks. Oh, yes. Even a claim satisfaction guarantee. In means protection plus unique extras. Only from an expert Allstate agent. It's good to be in good hands. I'm going to make this as simple as possible for you. You can go ahead and stick with that complicated credit card that limits where you earn bonus cash back. Or you can get the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Quicksilver earns you unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, everywhere. I shouldn't have to ask. What's in your wallet? To football fans, Bristol Motor Speedway is going to be something totally new. But for us racers, it also feels kind of familiar. 150,000 plus packed to the sky. Ears ringing. Helmets flying. Hard contact. Even officials throwing flags. For 55 years, from the king to the kid, racers have filled these hills with cheers and boots. My daddy filled them with both. Tonight, they will be filled with orange and maroon, balls and hokies, a town and a track divided between two states. Yeah, they've moved some stuff around for the game, but it's still Bristol. All this green can only mean one thing. Go. Welcome to the Battle of Bristol. Let's take a look at On the Road to Bristol, brought to you by Pilot Flying J. We call this place the last great coliseum, and it feels that way for sure. Rising up in the Smokies here, the lights around as darkness has fallen here in the foothills of the Appalachians on a perfect night for football. Temperature sitting at 84, the slightest wind to speak of. The forecast is partly cloudy. We've seen some weather delays across the country, but that does not appear to be an issue for us here on the Tennessee-Virginia state line tonight in Bristol, Tennessee. A Big Ten officiating crew is going to work this game tonight, led by referee Daniel Capron, and there are dignitaries from both Tennessee and Virginia Tech here. As Marty Smith told you earlier, this has been 20 years in the making, a vision that has now become reality for these two schools. This virtually the midway point between the two of them. And you see Peyton Manning over there as you have a look at Justin Fuente. Saw Bruce Smith from Virginia Tech out at midfield. Hokies wearing those Hokie Stone uniforms. That is the dominant stone on the Virginia Tech campus. Tennessee in their customary orange and white. And I mean, these guys are ready to go. Volunteers walking their way out. Fuente's pretty even keeled, isn't he? <laughs> Ready to get this thing started. Let's go down to the field. Gentlemen, it's my honor to produce, introduce to you tonight Mr. Bruton Smith. He's the chairman of the Bristol Motor Speedway, and he's going to flip the coin for us. Virginia Tech, you're the visiting team. We have a ceremonial coin which is marked with the heads and with the tails. Mr. Smith's going to flip that coin in the air. We're going to allow it to hit the ground. What is your call? Tails is called. Mr. Smith, would you do us the honor? Flip it up. It is heads. Tennessee, you've won the toss. What do you want to do? Defer. You want to defer. Tennessee has won the toss and elected to defer their choice to the second half. Virginia Tech, you want the ball. Which goal do you want to defend? We'll kick this way. Kick this way. Please put your backs over here. Virginia Tech, backs over here. Virginia Tech will receive to start the game.
This is an atmosphere unlike any that any of these players have ever been in. And certainly, I mean, the entrance at Virginia Tech enters Sandman running through the tee in front of 100,000 at Neyland Stadium. Great moments, but this is unique. This is yeah. different for all of them. For Justin Fuente, he's trying to get his team ready to go, obviously. New era beginning. These players are fired up. And you wondered why Tennessee was flat against Appalachian State because they were looking at this night. That will not be an issue for Butch Jones and the balls tonight. There is Joshua Dobbs, the veteran quarterback for the Volunteers. A lot on him to improve his passing. And here comes the big orange, as they say around here. It's football time in Tennessee. Things are going well for the Big Orange. You hear that unofficial anthem over and over. And now the Hokies are coming to meet them. The Chicago Maroon and burnt orange in the stands. The Hokie Stone uniforms. Virginia Tech and Tennessee about ready to go. Samantha Ponder with us tonight, as always. She's with Butch Jones. Coach, your quarterback said last week the team just lacked intensity. I imagine that's difficult to do tonight, but how would you describe the way your offensive line and quarterback got better during practice this week? Well, we had a great week of preparation. It's relying on your habits that you established throughout the course of the week and in your football program, and we've done it before, and again, we've had a very productive week. Now we have to make it count tonight. Coach, we talked about the, the difficulties this environment presents in terms of depth perception, but also the two lights in these corners over here. How would you characterize your concern with some of the variables here? Well, we have to focus. That's uncontrollable factors. The biggest thing is going to be communication with the crowd noise. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you. Sam Butch, thank you very much. And here is the new head coach of the Hokies, Justin Fuente. And Kirk, hey, look. His record is just okay. You have to understand, when he took over at Memphis, they had won five games in three years. 19-6 and six his last two seasons, and he's 1-0 here at Virginia Tech. That's a great point, and, and uh, very deserving of this opportunity. And I think if you look at kind of what he represents, the type of coach that he is, how he grew up as a young coach with Gary Patterson, it's similar. He, he brings a blue-collar approach to Blacksburg, which fits with Bud Foster and, and kind of the traditional outlook of hokey football over the years with Frank Beamer. As you heard at the coin toss, Tennessee's going to kick it off. Aaron Medley will get it started. Greg Stroman's deep underway from Bristol Motor Speedway. Stroman's got it in the corner. Orange everywhere, and he can't even get started. And Tennessee has him knocked down right at the 10-yard line. And here comes the Hokies quarterback, Gerard Evans. Uh, Gerard Evans, we saw him at the walkthrough. What an impressive guy to talk to. There's a good look in his eye. I, I think the first thing is the first real test. This is an opportunity for him to see how he handles adversity. Has a big arm. He's going to have to challenge Tennessee downfield. And he's got a lot of weapons around him. Isaiah Ford, number one, is his go-to man. You also see Trayvon McMillan in the backfield. They've got a lot of skill. And they have the ability to challenge this Tennessee defense. Evans a transfer from Trinity Valley Community College where he threw 38 touchdown passes a year ago. Four touchdown passes in the opener against Liberty. They go empty. Evans gets a quick completion to the dangerous Isaiah Ford. Ford and 11 catches for more than 100 yards a week ago. And this is not what you'll see or what you've seen in the past for Virginia Tech, I should say. Hokies want to pick up the pace. Picked up five on first down. As Bucky Hodges in motion, first carry of the night, goes to Trayvon McMillan, and McMillan is up close to the first down before he's knocked down by Jalen Reeves-Maven. 
You go back to Justin Fuente as a play caller, even at TCU and in Memphis. The first thing he says when you talk to him about his offense, we got to get the ball in the perimeter. We got to get the ball in the perimeter. Meaning, first play, just throwing it out. Those quick look passes, screen passes. They love to stretch the defense out horizontally, make those defensive linemen and linebackers have to run sideline to sideline, and then they go back to the bread and butter, which is running between the tackles. A little bit of a cat and mouse game. First third down of the night. And Sam Rogers trying to get everybody lined up, and Virginia Tech has to take a timeout. In the early going, first half particularly, a little confusion in the backfield, want to try to keep this drive alive and build a little confidence. Might as well use the timeout and make sure that you get things straightened out. Now, Kirk alluded to Justin Fuente's background, first head coaching job at Memphis, but he certainly has a deep background at Illinois State, who's the offensive coordinator, and also at TCU, where he had great success. He did a great job there, really made a name for himself, opened up the opportunity to become a head coach, and now he, here he is in Blacksburg, taking over for a legend in Frank Beamer, and will put his own stamp on this program, and most notably and most obvious will be the offensive structure and how they attack. It used to be eye formation, running the football featuring the tailback now it's more of what you see in college football in 16 which is a spread look Evans a big foul he'll keep it himself he has the first down and a good pickup on third down and this is one of the things that Justin told us he was still getting comfortable with how Gerard Evans likes to run the ball. And he said he's still really learning what his strengths are uh, in a game. Don't forget when you're watching him, he does have an ability to run the ball, and he's a big guy. 6'3", 235 pounds, 40 pounds. Well, Hokies have picked up the first first down of the night. They've moved it out from their own 10 to tennis, uh, to their own 27, I should say. Tennessee showing man-to-man coverage he looks over and gets a play that Justin Fuente helped him with to check out of a quick pass quick completion Ford has another grab and he has the first down he had tight man coverage at the bottom Justin Fuente helps the young quarterback Evans out with the softer coverage to the top and he just makes a quick read and again get the ball out of his hands quickly and get the ball out to the edge Sam Rogers carrying it for a short game. Those two catches by Ford Kirk. He has two catches already tonight. He has at least two catches in every game he's played at Virginia Tech now in his junior season. One of the more underrated wide receivers in college football. He's a good size. And if you look at the matchup tonight, he'll go up against Mosley, number 12, who he's, he's just much bigger, but also a chance to go up against one of the top in the SEC right there, Cameron Sutton. Sutton had a huge interception in the Appalachian State game. Moving the pocket for Evans. Going to take a shot. He's got Ford down there. And Ford has it knocked away. If the ball had been out front, he might have scored. And Sutton was able to break it up at the last second. Yeah, he, he did a good job of getting behind him. And watch this move right here. Sutton gets his eyes in the backfield and actually guesses on the outcut. It's in, he's in no man's land. But Evans early has an open man downfield, and he underthrows him. As you said, he had him beat by maybe three steps. Underthrew the long ball, and it gave Sutton a chance to come back and actually knock the ball away. Nice lay, route there by Ford. Now lay that up and let him run under it, and we have our first touchdown of the night. It'll be off to the races, so to speak. Delay to Rodgers. Does he have the speed to get to the corner? That's a terrific run by Sam Rodgers, noted as a fullback and a blocker, but he's an effective runner, too. He does a real good job there in space. Reeves Mabin, who's one of the better linebackers and leaders of this team, number 21, had him sh well short of the, the first down, but he put his foot in the ground, cut back against the grain, and has a nose for that first down marker and picks it up. Again, one of these offenses, they'll go fast, then they'll, they'll, they'll kind of give a decoy as they're going fast, look over, get confirmation, and adjust the play. Trouble with the snap. Evans corrals it, and 
This is where it bears mentioning that Virginia Tech lost four fumbles a week ago. But, but in fact, these two teams didn't lose all of them, but between them, they put the ball on the ground nine times yeah. in their opener, and that snap was just high. I think they wanted to get it to four, but the timing was just all fouled it, up. It's a little thing that you work on in practice over and over and over, repetition, 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 and sometimes you take something you take for granted, and you're right, so many different moving parts, guys coming in motion, that snaps a little high, and it, it, it throws off the timing, and now you're looking at second and long. Here goes Rodgers again. Rodgers gets the edge, and where he's shoved out of bounds, he gets inside the 45-yard line. Much more manageable third down. Another fine run by Sam Rodgers, the senior from Mechanicsville, Virginia. It's a Tennessee defense led by a new defensive coordinator this year, and Bob Shoup, who comes over from Penn State, where he's working for James Franklin. And he is an, has an aggressive mindset, and he's got a lot of experience on this defense coming back. Here's Derek Barnett jumping. At the bottom, reaction there by the right tackle, McLaughlin, though. Interesting call here. Offside. Defense, number nine. Five-yard penalty or down. Dan Capron making the call. Virginia Tech had been two for two on third down. And this one, they get a little help from Derek Barnett to pick up another first down. And the Hokies who are worried as to whether they could run the football. They've mixed it up beautifully on this opening drive, and Butch Jones's team is a tan off balance as the Hokies have moved just inside the Big Orange 40. Evans gets rid of it and put it in harm's way. Bucky, Bucky Hodges was the nearest guy to it. But really, the two Tennessee defenders were closer. You're really getting a feel for what this Virginia Tech offense is going to look like in this new era on this drive. I mean, you're seeing a lot of different things. Eligible receiver downfield. Offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty. First down. You're seeing a lot of different formations, a lot of different plays. They're, they're getting the ball outside. There's a bootleg. I mean, it, it, what it does is it affects the eyes of the defensive linemen and the linebackers because they, they don't know if the ball is going to go inside or outside, so they're very hesitant and unsure. Yep. Evans extending that play so long. That's what got McLaughlin downfield, but they declined the penalty anyway here. He wanted to take the down rather than the penalty. McLaughlin was blocking. I'm not really sure as to why. Do do that. They're not far away from field goal range. Option pitch. A little trouble with the pitch. And then C.J. Carroll couldn't corral it. And that, that had disaster written all over it. And the Hokies come away to tell about it. Jonathan Kongbo was in Kongbo there. did. Junior college guy. They're really high on a guy that's still learning football. Yeah. And maybe that's why they declined it. Now they got him a third and Yeah, long. exactly. <laughs> Kongbo, that time, you can see what everybody's excited about with his, his athletic ability off the edge of this defense. Big, he's 6'6", 270 pounds, and very quick. Evans pulls it down and eludes a tackler. Evans inside the 35. Straining toward that first down line. He's going to be about a yard short. Fourth down from the 30, but now Justin Fuente will have a decision to make, but they're also within field goal range, too. It's a great job by Evans keeping his play alive, but watch the diving by, by the Tennessee defense. He makes two guys miss. Nobody blocked him. I mean, it's, it's, he's a tough guy to tackle more because of his size, but he's very elusive. But you got to break down. It's third and forever. You got to at least slow him down and not give him a chance to get to that first down marker. Well, you're down for Tennessee, as you see Fuente talking it over with Evans. And we were just talking a moment ago about Jonathan Kongbo, redshirt sophomore from Surrey, British Columbia, and working on Jonathan's right leg. Coach is telling us he played basically one year of high school football. He's still just learning the game, but has such raw ability and size. Again, 6'6", 270, and explosive off the edge. Yeah, and Bob Shoup believing that in time is good to see Kongbo up and yeah. walking off under his own power, that maybe in time he's going to move and be an inside guy. He can I, I think he will. Too. I mean, you got Derek Barnett. You got Latroy Lewis. You have Corey Vereen. I mean, they're, they're loaded right now 
on the edge and wouldn't surprise me at all to see him get moved into the inside at some point. Fuentes made his decision. Joey Sly comes on to attempt the field goal. It'll be a 47-yarder. His career long is 49. Muscular cat, he's got the range. See if he can put it through this time, and it is leaking a bit to the outside, and it is no good. And Tennessee turns away Virginia Tech. Hokies have a good opening drive, but no points to show for it. with intuitive all-wheel drive. The Nissan Rogue, Murano, and Pathfinder. Now get 0% APR for 72 months plus $500 bonus cash. When you run your own restaurant, every night is opening night. Coors Light, whatever your mountain, climb on. Now that we've added adjustable base, my favorite part Perfect. is to be able to lift your legs up a little bit and it feels like I'm just cradled. Change your sleep, change your life, change to Tempur-Pedic. Now through September 11th, upgrade and save on select Tempur-Pedic mattresses and adjustable bases. This is what I feel like when I wear regular shoes, cramped and uncomfortable. Mr. Long, you've been upgraded. Oh. Which is why I wear Skechers Wide Fit Shoes. <sighs> it's like first class for your feet. Try Skechers Wide Fit with air-cooled memory foam. Taco Bell's $5 Cravings Deal. With a cheesy gordita crunch, burrito supreme, nachos, taco, and a Baja Blast. All the cravings one person can handle. Just $5. Only at Taco Bell. Welcome to Stouffer's Fit Kitchen. Prime cuts of meat, 25 grams of protein, and savory mouth-watering sides. It's the perfect balance of delicious and nutritious, making it just the right fit for you. Stouffer's Fit Kitchen Meals. This is fit. At Johnsonville, we trust our recipes. Naturally hardwood smoke. 100% premium pork, no fillers, period. I'm Nick, that's my brother Brett, and we're proud to say it's made the Johnsonville way. Hey Jordan, looks like it's gonna be another hour or so. No worries, I'll keep you posted. September 21st on ABC. Back at the battle at Bristol. Virginia Tech and Tennessee. Hokies just had a 12-play drive and ended with a missed field goal. And now we'll get a chance to see Joshua Dobbs. Yeah, the big thing for him tonight is patience. He's going to face a defense that is very stingy. It's going to be a yard, a yard, and then hit a big one. Other thing is creativity. He has great athletic ability. And the way Bud Foster has his defense attacking and playing man-to-man, He's going to have plenty of opportunities to not just make plays with his arm, but make some plays tonight with his feet as well. Set a Tennessee record last year for a quarterback with 671 yards on the ground, but he had negative rushing yards against Appalachian State. First throw of the night, and there were Hokies all around him as a short completion. And Jawan Jennings making the first grab of the night. Second and long coming as we take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. They're going to go tempo here. you got to go quick. Hurd and Malone are their most explosive players. This defense gets Adonis Alexander back, which is going to be good. And the middle linebacker is key tonight as well. Quarterback draw, Dobbs. It's up to the 35-yard line. Third and about five and a half coming up. Remember, this is an offense that struggled up front. As an understatement against Appalachian State, they were whipped in every aspect of the game. The quickness gave them problems. They've heard about it everywhere they have gone all week. The media, the talk shows, going to class, everywhere. You know they're determined to have a better week, game, better game tonight. Got to get it just across the 40. 
And he won't. Kenny Cannon is there to sack Dobbs in the hokey defense, forces a three and out. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 Canham has great suddenness, great quickness on the outside. Watch him just coming with the speed rush right up here. Just nothing fancy. He's, he's got power, great low center gravity, but it's the speed just going right around the freshman Richmond. He had no chance there to slow him down. Uh, Richmond had a rough night against Appalachian State, too. He's a young left tackle, and he can has been around for a while. He couldn't wipe the smile off Ken's face yesterday, saying he was so glad he didn't finish last year and got a chance to play in this. And now he's made a big play. And Stroman makes the fair catch just inside his own 40-yard line. The Hokies have it back and have good field position. Scoreless early going in Bristol. Thank you. Amazing. Thank I'm you. so thirsty right oh, now. Wait, man. wait, wait, wait. I gotta share this. Uh, oh, wait. It's an alert from Wells Fargo. Suspicious card activity. Come on, man. Let me have oh, it. This won't take long at all. It's got a text back that I did make that purchase, and then done. Finally. Thank you. Can I have it already? Uh, uh, uh. Don't rush my art. Suspicious card activity alerts. Security, convenience, together. Wells Fargo. Together we'll go far. I mean, just wow. Yeah. Wow. with intuitive all-wheel drive. The Nissan Rogue, Murano, and Pathfinder. Now get 0% APR for 72 months plus $500 bonus cash. Okay, team, what if 30,000 people download the new app? We're good. Okay, what if a million people download the new app? We're good. Five million? Good. We scale on demand. Hybrid infrastructure. <sighs> okay, what if 30 million people download the app? We're not good. We're total heroes. Scale on demand with the number one company in cloud infrastructure, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Summer's winding down, but fall's just heating up. Let's rethink the yard and add some easy color. This is what fall can look like now. Get five bags of Earth Grow Mulch for just 10 bucks. Only at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Man, Arby's chicken sandwiches have really let themselves go. They barely fit on the bun anymore. Someone should say something. Arby's, we have the meat. Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo. Security, convenience, together. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. And Coca-Cola, taste the feeling. Aerial coverage from Bristol tonight provided by Goodyear. Make every drive a touchdown with superior performance from Goodyear Tires. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. You, you, from our booth, you look out and look at the, the 150,000 people from our vantage point. They almost look like cardboard cutouts. Like you, you, <laughs> you, those are real people. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> this is uh, the giant video board which is suspended above the field by cables which are anchored outside the Bristol Motor Speedway. It's got a name. They call it Colossus. A little pop pass. He's got Rodgers over the middle. And Evans with a beautiful throw over the top. You know we've seen Kansas State use a similar play over the years with Sam Rodgers making impact early. Yeah, he came right out of the backfield. And with all the quarterback runs, the linebacker's eyes got caught up on Evans. Great time to call it. Pick up a 30 as they try to go quickly. Sutton makes the play. and See, uh, the linebackers got caught up. They're trying, to, they're trying to come up to make the tackle, what they thought would be a tackle on Evans. He just slides the fullback, who's a very valuable player in this offense. Sam Rogers, even last year, was the most versatile player on this offensive attack. And in this new offense, they still use him in a variety of different ways. 
And that first down play after the 30-yard pickup, Sutton made a really good play on Bucky Hodges. And there's Hodges who has the ball again. He was a tight end by trade. In this offense, they flexed him out a little bit. They find a lot of different ways to get a really exceptional athlete the ball. Big physical guy. Yeah, that time they put him in the backfield almost like an inverted wishbone. Another different look and something for this Tennessee defense to have to adjust to. Trayvon McMillan in the backfield. Hokies have converted two of three on third down. Need to pick up about eight. Pressure from the outside from Barnett. Tech picks it up, and a strike is fired to Cam Phillips. And it's another first down for Virginia Tech. They can, they can rush the quarterback. You're going to see the receiver. He just kind of sinks and sits right in between the linebackers. They give him enough time. I give Evans a lot of credit. He knew that this defense was coming after him on third down. He trusts his offensive line. And that time, great execution again on third down. They've, they've, they've done very well here early in this game on third down. They're now three of four. Left tackle 69. Joshua Nijden did a great job on that last play as McMillan drives it inside the 15. Still straining for every possible inch. Butch Jones and Bob Shoup knew that they'd give up some yards against these kind of offenses. You can't take everything away with an athletic quarterback and a spread attack. But they knew that when they got him into the red zone, they had to clamp down. They had to force field goals and not give up touchdowns. Okies with a 100-yard edge in the early going. McMillan. McMillan. Tough run, and McMillan had 1,000 yards on the ground a year ago, and Wente making him improve some pass protection to get a few more of those carries. And you see why he was talented enough to break the 1,000-yard mark as a freshman last year. This offensive line from Virginia Tech also doing a good job in the trenches, helping the junior college transfer quarterback out. Another third down, Evans. Leaning, pushing, straining, and he's carrying volunteers across the yellow line, and he appears to have a first down for Virginia Tech. If he does, it'll be first and goal, and that's what they're giving him. He, he carried two Tennessee defenders three yards to pick up. He's down right there, short of the first down, but that determination and that leg strength ends up picking the two or three yards he needed to just pick up the first down. The Hokies have come out and been the aggressor in the first few minutes. Evans into the flat. There's Rodgers lowering the shoulder for the pylon. Touchdown, Hokies. Do a great job again with this look. Nice job once again utilizing Sam Rogers' skills. Get him this time out the flat. Remember the first pass on this drive, they slid him out of the backfield behind the linebackers. This time with the play action fake, it froze the linebackers, but they get him to the outside. And again, he is a great athlete. Watch him extend here and get right to the pylon and destroy the camera. <laughs> that thing's indestructible, man. <laughs> It'll be back for more. I'll tell you, Sam Rogers is a player. He was a former walk-on mm -hmm. that earned a scholarship after one week <laughs> of practice. You wonder, you look at a guy who's just, just a football player and how you can't always judge a guy by the measurables. We spent some time with Sam yesterday. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's got a ton of heart, ton of skill, and he has had a huge impact on this game in the first quarter. Hokies up by a touch. percent APR for 72 months plus $500 bonus cash. Don't just think of it as half off late night apps at Applebee's. It's half off the after party. Half off the first date. Half off girls night. Late night half priced apps only at Applebee's. Hey, hey Mike, how you doing, man? Care about each and every one of you. Let's pump up on this one. Right 
watching in theaters and IMAX September 30th. So my daughter tells me you don't eat meat. Uh, nope. Vizio 60-inch 4K Ultra HD TV with Google Cast, $678. Save money, live better. Walmart. It's Peyton on Sunday morning. Do you like football? Yeah. It's Direct TV NFL Sunday Ticket. I can watch every Sunday Ticket game live on any device. Oh, I'm retired. Uh -huh. I just sit here watching nothing. Huh. If I were you, I'd work as long as you can. So. Get NFL Sunday Ticket only on Direct TV and watch live football anywhere. Switch today and get a hundred dollar reward card. <laughs> To achieve financial security, there are two halves to consider, protect and grow. Instead of focusing on insurance or investments alone, we bring them together into one whole picture. At Northwestern Mutual, we guide you along your path by combining personalized investments and world-class insurance. That's one of the reasons 96% of our clients stay with us year after year. At Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. Jimmy Kimmel hosts the Emmys, live Sunday, September 18th on ABC. Cassidy Hubbard with your Taco Bell studio update. Number 11, Texas, taking on UTEP. Shane Bichelle with the teardrop to Corey Ward, the true freshman quarterback, 12-15, 125 yards and two TDs in the first half. Reese Kirby, back to you. All right, Cassidy, and boy, how impressive has Shane Bouchelle been in the early going. Here is the ultimate bird's eye view at Bristol Motor Speedway. That is inside the big video board Colossus, which is 96 feet off the ground. Oh, Marty Smith, our buddy, went up in it yesterday <laughs> for college game day, and he, uh, he didn't have a good time. He no. was ready to come back down. He's not a fan of heights. That's one of the best things you could do against Tennessee is kick it out of the end zone. Vols will take over first and ten. Kirk West yeah, touchdown. Go back to the touchdown. I love that he put two receivers up here. And now you're going to get the corner, Cam Sutton, who's going to blitz. Leaves nobody out here, right? Now it's same look, same action. Put the ball. Now look at the linebacker's eyes. Look at the line. Here comes the corner. Going to slide Rodgers right here, right out into the flat. Linebackers freeze. Eyes in the backfield. Gives him a chance to get the ball to the flat, and then he's got the speed to be able to get to the corner. But the linebackers and safeties, eyes in the backfield because of the success of the running game, froze them. But the two receivers at the top also helped open that play up. And Gerard Evans, four for four on that drive, also converted a third down with his legs. And now Joshua Dobbs has an opportunity to answer. Dobbs flipping it out in the flat to the youngster Tyler Bird, a guy that Butch Jones is really excited about his potential. And the Vols are going to try to go with a little tempo. Well, they need to. They, they need to not only go tempo to help their own offense, it, when you go tempo, it, it tends to slow down a defense. Remember, it's a new head coach with the same defensive coordinator with Bud Foster. Bird picked up about four, and now Jalen Hurd will be knocked down short of the first down, third down coming. And Bud Foster has been a defensive coordinator in Virginia Tech for a long time. Had one of the worst years last year as a coordinator because so many different injuries and he didn't have a lot of depth. They're anxious to come back this year and have a much better year. Dobbs on third down, firing, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Josh Malone, and that play looked discombobulated almost from the snap. Nigel Williams was back there rushing Dobbs. Oh, uh, yeah, the pass rush again. Oh, my gosh. On third down, if you're Josh Dobbs, you're holding on for dear life. I mean, the, the left side of the offensive line gets caved in again. Think about being Josh Dobbs and watch this pressure. He gets the ball off, but look what's closing in on him. And not only defensive lineman, his own offensive lineman, Drew Richmond, the freshman. Welcome to college football, young. Young man. <laughs> I was going to say youngin'. Yeah. <laughs> Heard missed a block, too. Tennessee has six yards on six plays. Two possessions as Froman makes the fair catch inside his own 25. And... 
They only had three plays to try to figure out exactly how Virginia Tech is cutting them up, and they've been doing just that. Kick off your week one in the NFL and NFL Sunday with ESPN. 10 a.m. Eastern Time, NFL Insider Sunday Edition. All the injury news, fantasy updates, and so forth. Then at 11, the new Sunday NFL Countdown. Chris Berman, Trent Dilfer, Charles Woodson, Matt Hasselbeck, and Randy Moss will take you right up to kickoff. Both shows, as all of our shows are, streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Josh Dobbs, a leader. Guys played a lot of football. This is the same thing that happened against Appalachian State. And we heard about, well, it was an odd front. It was, they were slanting and angling. They were quick and small. Whatever it is, it's happening again tonight. Quick slant complete. Cam Phillips has another catch. Good pickup on first down, Sam. Reese, Steve Stripling, defensive line coach of Tennessee, very upset with the lack of physicality from his defense, specifically telling his guys you have to be more physical on those tight ends. It's just not enough. They were challenged in that way against App State. Let's see how they respond. Sam, they're, Sam, they're losing the battle at the line of scrimmage in this first quarter on both sides of the ball. It's evident, especially with that defense out there. Second down and two. McMillan bounces to the outside and running room for Trayvon McMillan. He's in Tennessee territory. McMillan is still on his feet. He will take it to the house. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Receiver Isaiah Ford. After a couple of methodical drives, one resulting in a touchdown, one resulting in no points, now the Hokies show them the quick strike offense. Uh, he had great vision here. The play designed to go to the right. He ends up seeing the crease to the backside. There's the block by Ford. There's nobody left. There's got to be a linebacker. Where's the safety? Todd Kelly right there. He's getting left. McMillan showing that he's got big time speed in the open field. I enlisted in the Army in 2005. I went to Iraq three times and Afghanistan once. She's the culprit that uh, ripped our door off. 2,000 pound animal bumping into a steel door creates quite a bit of damage. I actually use the app, take pictures of it right there for uh, USAA, and they take care of the rest. USAA is great about working with both active and separated military. I'm Josh Eilers, and I'm a USAA member for life. Call USAA today to talk about your insurance needs. There's always something of importance to do. There are hungry people to feed. There are sick people to comfort and make well. There are new paths to explore and new ways to soar. We answer as we are called and serve as we are needed. We are Virginia Tech. Hokey High, Tech Tech VPI. They're doing all of the chance. Those Hokie Stone uniforms are working just fine. As Trayvon McMillan just ripped off a 69-yard run to the house, and Virginia Tech is owning the first quarter against Tennessee. 14 to nothing. Weren't the Hokies worried about trying to find a way to run the ball? He's moved it in a variety of ways, and Evan Barry will have no chance.
chance to return it. Yeah, let's go back to the touchdown here. You're going to see Nijman, actually, the left tackle, does a great job of a seal right here. And Ford comes in also. The corner follows him, and he just pushes him into in the interior, and there's nobody left. I'm shocked at a linebacker and a safety, Kelly, not with better pursuit angle and the speed to be able to slow him down. Look at the seal block there. Nice block by Ford, and there's nobody left down that left boundary to stop him from picking up a touchdown. As McMillan catches his breath, Tennessee comes out down by double digits for the second straight game. Down 13-3 to Appalachian State. Jalen Hurd running and driving his feet and carrying people and just shedding Hokies along the way. I was just about to say, you're down 14. The first game of, you, of the season couldn't have gone any worse. Who's going to step up and show they have some heart and some leadership and they want to compete? Looks like Jalen Hurd does. Nothing doing this time as Kenny Cannon's right there to put Hurd on the turf. Well, he is a good football player and he is having a night. Drew Richmond, the left tackle, is having a long night. Left tackle 51 is up against it tonight. Hurd on second down and Andrew Matua Pawaka makes his first tackle of the night. A veteran guy running this Bud Foster defense. I talked earlier about how Bud Foster's defense allowed 181 yards last year. It's the highest since 1987 for a Virginia Tech defense. You think they had a long offseason? You think they wanted to get back on the field and show the guys that played on that field last year that they're better than that? Third down and eight in Tennessee desperately. Needs to keep the ball. Pressure on Dobbs. Flag comes down. It looks as if it might be a hole, but Matua Pawaka doesn't let Dobbs get to the first oh down line gosh. anyway. Wait till you see. This is actually a tackle. This isn't a <laughs> hole. This is a WWE takedown. Coleman Thomas, if you can't block him, just body slam him. Holding offense. Number 55. The penalty is declined. Down. Is this what it's come down to on third down for Tennessee? Watch 55, the center. And he had a long game against Appalachian State. If you can't block him, this is a good move you can maybe try. Body slam right in front of the referee. It, the third down is becoming a down where they're going to have to run quarterback draw and just deal with the pressure and hope that Dobbs can make plays. Because they can't protect him. He, he, he doesn't have a chance. Uh, that's the thing right now, Kirk, is... This is already, as early as it is, danger time for Tennessee because it's tough to have any kind of rally if you can't get any protection or consistently open any holes. Strowman's going to let it hit, and everything's bouncing. Virginia Tech's way it goes into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20s. We check in with Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Reese. Taco Bell Studio Update. BYU and Utah in the Holy War and Taysom Hill with a 39-yard rushing touchdown to give his Cougars a 13-7 lead. Reese, Herbie, back to you guys. Cassidy, BYU's lost five straight against Utah, including one in the Vegas Bowl last year. They'd like to turn that around for their new head coach, Galani Sataki, and Josh Jobs just wants to get this game turned around for the Big Orange. I know he's got great poise, and he's a veteran. At some point, he's going to have to lose it on the sideline and, and go after that offensive line. He, he, is, he is a cerebral guy. He, he's got poise, but he's got to really lay into him. Evans, quarterback draw, and... Tennessee's not having it. No gain. It'll be second down and 10. Jalen Reeves Maven on the stop. If you're Virginia Tech, it's same old, same old. This thing has worked to perfection. Different formations, spreading Tennessee out. A lot of different looks, play action looks. They're running the quarterback. They're running the backs. It's opening up play action for them. Here comes Tennessee with some pressure. Moves the pocket. Evans has his man. It's Bucky Hodges, and Hodges... And a nifty move over the top of Sutton gets the first down. I never understand why you, you bring pressure, it's picked up, and then you have soft coverage behind it. it, it, it once it's picked up, it, I know you're trying to confuse a quarterback who hasn't had a lot of snaps at this level, but boy, oh boy, that's a, that's a big cushion and an easy throw there for, for Evans. Final minute, of, final minute of the first quarter here. And look, I think... Everybody 
respected Virginia Tech as they work on Latroy Lewis. But Tennessee is a team that was highly regarded 17 starters back from a year ago and they come back and in the first two weeks I mean you dismiss last week against last Thursday night a week ago Thursday against Appalachia State to maybe just not being as engaged as they should have been. Uh, they were supposedly engaged tonight. And it's a long game. Yeah. Nobody's writing them off. They haven't been able to do anything on offense. Look at the numbers. I mean, look, look at these numbers. You have, you have two passing yards. They can't run the football. I, I think you've got to get back to running the football. Pass protection is not a strength of this offensive line. Running the ball with Jalen Hurd and running the ball with Josh Dobbs is something that you have to feel you, you can you can do. And, and if you can do that, that can set up some passing opportunities where it's more play action. You pass the ball under your terms, not not when you're back at third and five and third and seven, where your offensive line just doesn't have a chance so far. Evans flicks it. Well covered receiver. He was looking for his tight end, Chris Cunningham. It, it does make you scratch your head because th this offensive line for these guys played a lot of football last year and they played and, and, and competed and did very well. They won nine games and this was not a reoccurring theme mm -hmm. for these guys last year. I mean, there are a lot of people excited about what this offense had in store this year because of what was returning. Kirk, they ran for more than 2,900 yards. They're, They're second in the SEC. Yeah. And meanwhile, McMillan just keeps running wild, although I think we have laundry on the field. And 18 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Let's see what the call is. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist. Offense, number 57, 15-yard penalty. Second down. And caught Wyatt Teller for the illegal block. Virginia Tech, because of the pace at which they want to run and they feel like a lot of their offensive linemen are all not only serviceable but interchangeable. Teller getting some time in there, but he picks up the penalty. It's a, pr it's a pretty good thing when you're coach tells us we have 10 or 11 guys we feel pretty good about mm -hmm. maybe Tennessee can make a trade at halftime and, and, <laughs> and get some of those linemen on well, the first quarter could not have possibly gone better for Gerard Evans and the Hokies two touchdowns and another drive that almost resulted in points and Fuentes played 15 minutes and he's up by two touchdowns and he's still pushing that's the end of the first quarter here in Bristol we'll be back right after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Honey, what are you doing? Watching a cow. Oh, what's it doing? Impressions. your morning with a new 300 calorie egg white grill only at chick-fil-a now that we've added adjustable base my favorite part Perfect. is to be able to lift your legs up a little bit and it feels like i'm just cradled change your sleep change your life change to tempur-pedic now through september 11th upgrade and save on select tempur-pedic mattresses and adjustable bases i joined the army in july of 98 i did active duty 11 years and two in the reserve our 18-year-old was in an accident. When I call USA, it was that voice asking me, is your daughter okay? That's where I felt relief. It actually helped to know that somebody else cared and wanted to make sure that I was okay. That was really great. We're the Rivera family, and we'd all be with USAA for life. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Call today to talk about your insurance needs. Morning. Hey, do you know when the game starts? 11 hours? No. I'm going to head back to my room. Want to wake up at Super Bowl 51? Super Bowl! Enter Courtyard Super Bowl Sleepover Contest at Courtyard.com for your chance to win. We're moving because I found the perfect situation for your brother. In the DeMeo family. Someone who's going to be by your side. A voice. It's not what you say. You sound cool. I am cool. It's how you say it. Ah! He says... Ah! Speechless. Premieres Wednesday, September 21st on ABC. It's been used universally for decades. The consummate attaboy. Good job. Way to go. Because nothing says a job well done like the classic high five. 
So if someone wants to give you five, the polite thing to do is say thank you. That's why for five years in a row, Farm Bureau Insurance has been proud to receive the J.D. Power Award for highest customer satisfaction among auto insurers in the Southeast region. Farm Bureau Insurance. Tennessee turns to us. What if you could keep an eye on your finances? Whether you're at the butcher, the baker, or the soy latte maker. At Ascend, we offer online bill pay, remote deposit, and other e-services so you can take your accounts with you. And every transaction is safe and secure. Stay on the go with Ascend's e-services and see what's possible. Come join the Tennessee Titans on Monday, September 12th for Delaney Walker's Titans 10-Pin Tailgate. All of the proceeds go to the Delaney Walker Gives Back Foundation. To find out more information and to buy your ticket, visit DelaneyWalker.org. Titans on 2, Monday at 6.30, only on News 2. Welcome back to the Pilot Flying J Battle at Bristol. It's presented on ABC by Wells Fargo. And... They call it the battle at Bristol, but it's been a one-sided punch fest so far. Virginia Tech has been punching, and Tennessee's been taking it right in the jaw. 14 to nothing. Virginia Tech owned the first 15 minutes of play. We're going to hear from Samantha Ponder in a minute. That's Sharon Jones, a backup quarterback. It's not that he's about to go into the game, but he might have had a little bit of an impact on it. As the Hokies have it to start the second and quarter, second and 25, they put the ball on the ground. This is a break Tennessee needs. If they can get it in, they do. It's the second time that Virginia Tech has had trouble handling it tonight, and Tennessee needed a break, and another fumble gives them one. The Hokies lost four fumbles in their opener against Liberty. Yeah, I think that was really more about the timing. The snap wasn't terrible. Carroll coming in motion. Actually, the timing of the, of the snap is what affected that. I don't know if that's on the snap or on Carroll or on the quarterback for, for sending him late, but that's what happened. And Tennessee catches a break. Their defense had their eyes on the football. They pounced on it. Maybe this is what Tennessee needs, not just great field position, but to get them into the football game with some emotion. It's Micah Abernathy that got the ball, and now Dobbs throwing to the end zone. Goes up top. It's a touchdown. Jawan Jennings outfights Greg Stroman for it, and the balls are on the board. Welcome to the 2016 season, Tennessee Vols. <laughs> First ounce of emotion we've seen from them in two games. They take advantage of it up 6'3", 205 pounds. He's able to go up and make a play. And Stroman's a talented player, but at 5'11", it's a lot tougher to go up and make that play. He actually fights for it all the way down. Tries to steal the ball away, but clearly a touchdown by Jennings and a nice throw there by Josh Dobbs. Put it up there where Jennings can make a play. Jennings, some will tell you, he's the toughest guy on their football team. Mike DeBoer, their offensive coordinator, said they needed to win some 50-50 balls. So you want to see a little emotion on the hey, sideline, do you? Right there. Seen plenty of it so far, at least in the last couple of plays. Tennessee's back in it at 14-7. No, I didn't make that purchase. Someone must have my card number. So I can pick up a new debit card right now? If you've lost your debit card, it's easy to get an instant issue debit card at any Wells Fargo store. Security, convenience, together. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. products with your life in mind because it's not enough to look beautiful it has to work beautifully every single 
today. The new American Standard faucets, styled for today. We got married in June. On Tuna Day. There's a Subway 350 sub of the day to help you remember life's important days. Every day, a different six-inch sub for just 350. Every day of the week at Subway. Her name is Terry. <laughs> she was born on Sweet, Sweet Onion, Onion Chicken, Chicken Teriyaki Day. We are the Coors Brewing Company. And our mountain is brewing the world's most refreshing beer. A beer proud enough to wear our name in big, red, scripted letters. That's why we lager, filter, and package cold. Because we believe every climb deserves a refreshing finish. Whatever your mountain, climb on. Good dude. Yeah, he stinks at golf, but he was great to get my claim paid fast. How fast? Mine got paid in one day. Wow, that's awesome. Is that legal? Big fat new. In just one day, we process a proven pay. One day pay, only from Aflac. Perhaps if chickens bothered to fly, they'd have more meat on those wings. Until then, Arby's will dip this in buffalo sauce. Arby's. We have the meat. My oh my. Find your way to relaxation with the crisp, soothing taste of real ginger and bubbles. Canada Dry, the root of relaxation. It's Peyton on Sunday morning. Hey, man. What up, Peyton? You know I have direct TV NFL Sunday ticket. I get every game, every Sunday, all in HD. Uh, yeah, I know that. So you want to come over? I'll make nachos. I can't right now, man. I'm playing. All right. That's the end for Tuesday. Get NFL Sunday ticket only on DirecTV and watch live football anywhere. Switch today and get a $100 reward card. We're moving because I found the perfect situation for your brother. But it's right next to the freeway. Now it's close to the freeway. It's right next to the train. Speechless. Series premiere Wednesday, September 21st on ABC. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Virginia Tech jumped on top of the Vols 14-0, but since the start of the second quarter, Tennessee's put up 239 yards. Josh Dobbs taking care of business, throwing three touchdown passes and the three fumbles. Those are the biggest thing for Virginia Tech. Cam Phillips just had a nice game that went awry at the end when he had the football stripped away. You know, some of this, I mean, you've got to take care of the ball, but Virginia Tech hasn't exactly had luck recovering them. They, there's a fumble on the ground that rolls right back to Hurd. My, my point exactly, Virginia Tech has fumbled eight times in two games this season. They've lost seven of them. Sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way, but that's why you need to secure it so it doesn't get on the ground in the first place, yeah. right? And, and again, we, we keep talking about how they're running a different system from uh, the system of the past when Frank Beamer was the head coach. You know, they are opening it up a little bit more. And, you, you know, but at the same time, some of these fumbles are just, uh, are just whether you're running a conservative offense or an open approach, it's it's just uh, plays you got to be able to make and, and be able to hold on to. And there's Phillips, who's made some good plays, and um, play's been halted temporarily. Terrell Edmonds being helped off the field. Fine defensive back for the Hokies. Next Saturday... College game day headed to Louisville. Florida State and Louisville, 9 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Going back to Coach Corso's old stomping First ground. time ever for yep. college game day to Louisville. Back to Coach Corso, Lamar Jackson. Have you seen the, uh, one of the I know hottest, you've seen this yeah. guy. People at home have seen this dude. Well, well, last year he was a star. Yeah. And the, the, the first two games, you see his numbers, it's off to as good a start as anybody in the country. But, yeah, we've never game day's never been to Louisville. That'll be a great environment. They'll be jacked up, and it's going to be a tremendous 
game. Obviously, this will be by far the biggest defensive challenge that Lamar Jackson Louisville face in Florida State. But I tell you what, those those guys look dangerous as Matua Pawaka is there to make the stop for Virginia Tech on her. Yeah, this Virginia Tech defense is not giving up on this football game. I know you, you're under 10 minutes. You're down by two touchdowns. They just blew a real opportunity deep in Tennessee territory. But if you get a stop right here, you get the football back, you're going to have pretty good field position. Down two touchdowns, important third down for the Hokies. Yeah, rushing three and dropping eight into coverage. See if the three can get heat. There are two of them on a cannon to slow him down. Hurd swarmed under. First guy to hit him, Mook Reynolds again. See, that's exactly what you want. When you when you rush three, if, if you actually get pressure, it, it's like icing on the cake. The real reason you rush three and drop eight is to be able to have eight helmets, eight sets of eyes staring at the quarterback. And the freshman, actually, Hill, did get in there. But see, you have three guys rallying to the football. It's exactly what you want. Great leverage on the ball. Trevor Daniel standing at his sixth to punt for Tennessee. Greg Stroman hasn't had a lot of return opportunities tonight. They'd have one good special teams play. And he came up and I think he muffed the punt. Now, did Tennessee get it before it went out of bounds? That was a dangerous play by Stroman going up to try to field it in traffic. To take possession of the ball, Tennessee had to secure it before it went out of bounds, and they did. Another miscue and turnover for Virginia Tech. You've talked a lot about patience tonight, and in that particular instance, Stroman perhaps trying too desperately to make yeah. a play. Yeah, I think he ran into his own man there, Curtis Williams. He, you know what? And if Stroman hadn't done that, that ball's probably going to hit Curtis Williams in the yeah, back anyway. Yeah, it is. So. But. Micah Abernathy there to scoop up the loose ball, the fourth turnover of the night for the Hokies. I got to share this. Oh, wait. Just got an alert from Wells Fargo about suspicious activity on my debit card. I just need to confirm that I made that purchase and done. Okay, can I have my drink out? Ah. Don't rush my art. Suspicious card activity alerts. Security, convenience, together. I'll take him for a ride in the Buick. Introducing the refined new SUV that's anything but a snooze to drive. The first ever Buick Envision. A joy to drive, a joy to share. And yes, it's a Buick. Now current lessees, switch to Buick and get this low mileage lease on this 2016 Envision for around $299 per month. Hello? Hey, Tommy! What did you say to me when I said I was going to invent the telephone? I said you were crazy. Mm. And what did you say to me this morning when I said I wanted chicken for breakfast? I said you were crazy. Oh, for two, pal. This new egg white grill from Chick-fil-A is aces. Chicken for breakfast. It's not as crazy as you think. Try the new egg white grill from Chick-fil-A. Work for it! Work for it! Come on, man! You ready to quit? Tired? Good! You think this is her? This is the warm-up! Playtime's up. Let's do it again. On Blu-ray this Tuesday. I've been waiting a long time for this. Captain America Civil War is coming home. You're not going to punch your way out of this. Come on! Hey, everyone. Yeah, we don't really it's... need to start a conversation. Oh, Captain? Big fan? Marvel's Captain America Civil War on Blu-ray this Tuesday. Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo. Security, convenience, together. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. And in part by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. And Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Replay official Tom Herbert had another look at that recovery of the muffed punt to see if Micah Abernathy of Tennessee was in bounds. 
ruling on the field stood. We looked at several angles during the commercial break. It was tough to tell. It looked to me, I thought Abernathy made the recovery before touching out of bounds. The officials concurred as Dobbs completes the pass to Jason Kroon. And here's another look at that This curve. is probably the best look. And we were talking with Dave Kataya. There's just, there's just not enough evidence to overturn that. Completion to Kroon. Got nine. And Tennessee with a two touchdown lead as we wind down toward eight minutes. Trying to put this thing away. Heard. Noses around and it's the ball forward for a couple yards enough to get the first down. That's a good job just staying north and south. I thought for a second he was going to try to bounce it and potentially try to go wide and then, and then, then potentially you end up losing three or four yards and now it's a third and five but instead he just picked up his two or three yards and got the first down. Dobbs in the sideline for assistance. They'll adjust the formation, put Hurd on the other side. Got eight guys up close to the line of scrimmage, obviously. There's her cutting it back, and boy, he took, took a hit right in the midsection. But still a good pickup on first down. Let's take a look at this week's AP rankings brought to you by Capital One. Now, Clemson only won by six. Some impressive performances from Ohio State and Florida State. Did you shuffle yeah. them up a little bit? Uh, yeah, you probably would look at that. I think Alabama is going to be up there. Alabama, Florida State. I think Clemson's sleepwalking right now uh, these first couple games. They'll probably slide down a spot or two. Ohio State, Michigan continue to not be challenged, but uh, look very, very good. Dobbs pulled it inside the 20. Joshua Dobbs on his way. Touchdown, Tennessee. You know, when you have a, a long run like that, takes some great blocks downfield and he picked up some blocks by his receivers and the big tight end Ethan Wolf did a good job zone read he's reading he can him comes down he pulls it out he's got the speed there's one good block another block off right in front of him there the receiver Josh Smith and again he's got the speed when he gets to that second and third level to make you pay for it again we knew he would run the ball he's over 100 yards tonight now running and he set a career record Rushing yards by a quarterback. He's had a 100-yard rushing night, accounting for five touchdowns, and the big orange up bit. I'll take him for a ride in the Buick. Introducing the refined new SUV that's anything but a snooze to drive. The first ever Buick Envision. A joy to drive, a joy to share. And yes, it's a view. Now current lessees. Switch to Buick and get this low mileage lease on this 2016 Envision for around $2.99 per month. Welcome to Stouffer's Fit Kitchen. Prime cuts of meat, 25 grams of protein, and savory mouth-watering sides. It's the perfect balance of delicious and nutritious, making it just the right fit for you. Stouffer's Fit Kitchen Meals. This is fit. Look at all these televisions. Is this heaven? Have we all died and gone to the sports afterlife? No. But this place is no less holy. A miracle of flat screens and premium sports packages all in the service of a sports fan's basest desires. So while this isn't the heaven, it is a heaven. And this one serves beer. Which is a nice twist. Can win, so I'm saying start me. Let's do this. Stop all plays, just using my body. Change the roster up and just start me. me. Opponents never gonna make first downs. Try and try to won't gain no ground. Build your team and take them all the way. Madden NFL 17. Rated E for everyone. Xbox One S, starting at $299. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. I know more about ISIS than the generals do. 
John McCain, a war hero. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? Donald Trump compared his sacrifices to the sacrifices of two parents who lost their son in war. How would you answer that, Father? What sacrifice have you made for your country? I think I've made a lot of sacrifices, built great structures. I've had tremendous success. I think those are sacrifices. At Johnsonville, we trust our recipes. Naturally hardwood smoke. 100% premium pork, no fillers, period. I'm Nick, that's my brother Brett, and we're proud to say it's made the Johnsonville way. Kiefer Sutherland is the designated survivor. Wednesday, September 21st on ABC. Let's take a look at tonight's All-State Good Hands play. Tennessee's had some good hands. The big fella, Shy Tuttle, on a third down play, anticipating a quick throw, goes up and knocks that down with his big paw. And then how about this? Ken- Kendall Vickers downfield, knocking that ball loose. Cam Phillips. And look who got it. Micah Abernathy. He's recovered three fumbles tonight. That is a Tennessee single game record, and that is why people in this section of seats, they're very sad. And then across the state line from Virginia into Tennessee, which is Bristol sits right on the state line, much happier with the brighter shade of orange. And Virginia Tech takes over down 38 to 17. All right, Kirk, time for your All-State street cred this week. You see the All-State bus, which has joined us here in Bristol. Yeah, this year, All-State and I are handing out street cred on Twitter each week, kind of highlighting the best performance each week on college football. And uh, this week, what a great performance at Heinz Field by the Pitt Panthers. It ended up being a really competitive game. Mm-hmm. They were up big, and Penn State fought back in a rivalry game. and. Pitt gets the street cred, team of the week. Another football on the ground for Tennessee, and this time it's Shy Tuttle who beats everybody to the ball. Another fumble, another addition for a good hands play, and Fuente, uh, at this point, I'm not sure what you do. Yeah, five turnovers now on the night. This this ball just, ne- Gerard Evans never had a chance. And look at the big man running. <laughs> look at Tuttle, 311. <laughs> Last year, broken ankle. They, they wanted to ease him back in. And we've seen him play a lot of football in this second half. That is a great sign for Tennessee ball fans. Would you, uh, would you like to know that the last three times Virginia Tech has touched the ball, all fumbles. Last three plays, all fumbles. And here at Bristol Motor Speedway, the Volunteers are racing for the checkered flag. And they've spun Virginia Tech out and put them into the wall along the way. John Kelly, young back there, very high on. And they take the checkered. They might have to run some laps for six and a half minutes, but this baby's in the books as Tennessee has roared away. I think this game was 14-0. And after the extra point, this is going to be a cool 45-3 run by the Big Orange. Well, sometimes Virginia Tech, which got off with such a good start, they explain things in NASCAR. Sometimes by saying it's just one of those racing deals. They've had a lot of those deals. Fender came off, bumper on the ground, tire blown out, lug nuts falling off. Tennessee, it's that bad? Putting the hammer down. 45, 17. Lug nuts off. That's gotta be a problem. Take him for a random view, like. Introducing the refined new SUV that's anything but a snooze to drive. The first ever Buick Envision. A joy to drive, a joy to share. And yes, it's a Buick. Now current lessees. Switch to Buick and get this low mileage lease on this 2016 Envision for around $2.99 per month. 
I'm terrible at golf. He is. But I'd like to keep being terrible at golf for as long as I can. New patented Insurin Live has HMB, plus 20 grams of protein to help rebuild muscle for the strength and energy to do what you love. New Insurin Live. Always be you. There's a curse on these woods. We have to go now. No! typical airline credit card, you only earn double miles when you buy stuff from that airline. Wait, is this where you typically shop? You should be getting double miles on every purchase. Switch to the Capital One Venture card. With Venture, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, everywhere, every day. Not just airline purchases. Seriously, double miles. Everywhere. What's in your wallet? What's it like to be in good hands? Man, it's like pure power at your fingertips. I got the power to know who's coming and when if I break down. You must be Jerry. Hey. In means getting more from your car insurance with DriveWise. It's good to be in good hands. Well, Virginia Tech, once upon a time, up 14 nothing, But since the second quarter started, a 45-3 spurt for Tennessee. They're on their way to victory and we're on our way to week one of the nfl sunday on espn 10 eastern nfl insider sunday edition injury news fantasy updates all of the early breaking stories then at 11 the new sunday nfl countdown crew now chris berman crit trent dilfer charles woodson matt hasselbeck and randy moss carry it a kickoff only streaming live and watch espn and the espn app as stroman gets drilled as he crosses the 20-yard line 628 to go and Gerard Evans and Virginia Tech have had a disastrous run in terms of taking care of the ball just I think just not putting it on the ground would be would be a victory here yeah I know Justin Fuente is frustrated there will be a lot of film work to try to improve but you got to talk about Butch Jones and the job that he's doing right now and building this Tennessee program up uh, you know I think he feels that this team can compete. They get off to a slow start uh, in their season against Appalachian State. It's got us off to a slow start tonight. The turning point in their season may, may be that fumble yeah. because it, it kind of ignited them, not just tonight, but it, it, there's so much pressure on them to, to win and get to Atlanta that sometimes that can affect the team and, and make them feel like they have to try to live up to some almost unrealistic expectations. This is a veteran team, 17 returning starters off a team that was 9-4. and four. You have a quarterback that's played a lot of football. I mean, they're, they're very high expectations. And tonight, they finally just played. Virginia Tech kind of opened the door for them, but they just finally started to play. And if I'm a Tennessee fan, I'm not only excited about this year, I'm excited about Butch Jones and, and the job he's doing in recruiting and the facilities and everything really that they have going in Knoxville. There's a lot to be excited about. And that record last year, Kirk, it, it was, I think, even more than just being 9-4. and four. It's the way they had opportunities to oh, yeah. win the Oklahoma game, the Florida game, the Alabama game. All of those were opportunities for Tennessee to truly have a special season. There's such a, there's such a hunger among that fan base and really within that football program to get back to the level that Tennessee has been at in the past, and, and that's the next step. This is what they have coming up. They've won on September 24th. Gargantuan because of the losing streak the Vols have had against the Gators. And people forget that this program is still learning how to win. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they're 9-4 they're and four last year, but you go to previous seven seasons, they were 40 and 47. Below 500 combined. And last year, 9-4. And, and so 
when you you're learning how to win like what Alabama does well what Ohio State does well these there it's, it's consistency mm -hmm. it's not an emotional hey we're really high and excited today next week we're gonna be flat and the following week we're gonna get excited the next week we're flat it's consistency and that that's what he's trying to find with his team this year Inside five minutes to play as we check in down on the track with uh, Dr. Jerry Punch. Hey guys, Butch Jones, you guys were talking about the fact that they had trouble finishing some of those big games a year ago. In the offseason, Butch, when he was talking about coming here, the NASCAR terminology, he said guys can lead races late. They start looking in their mirrors and thinking about what's coming up behind them, and guess what? They don't win. He said the focus has got to be out the windshield. we got to focus forward on the next play, the next lap. That's how we win races. That's how we win ball games. We got to overcome adversity, which is what they did on Thursday night against Appalachian State. And after going down by two scores here, that's what they have done here tonight: focusing forward and trying to be able to finish. Yeah, Doc, we've seen it again tonight, and, and it was a sluggish start. But he's got to be very proud that they kept fighting. Now, there's gonna he, he's gonna have a lot of film work and a lot of stuff to be able to show them that they can get a lot better. With that offensive line, when they look at that first quarter. And they look at some of the pass protection situations. They, they, they should want to sprint out to the practice field and into the weight room to try to get better. Before, you know, we, we've seen Florida these first couple weeks. They look pretty good on defense. Yeah, they really do. Not to mention Alabama and the rest of the SEC teams that they're going to be playing. A couple of weeks away from that showdown with the Gators. Devin's. Starts to throw it, pulls it down. Gerard is tripped up by Golden as he works his way inside the 10-yard line. And if, and if you're Virginia Tech, it's a transition year with a new head coach. There's going to be some growing pains. There's going to be some highs. There's going to be some lows. It's going to be one of those kind of years. Guy McKenzie lowering his shoulder and sending some volunteer bodies flying. Hated all the turnovers, but if you look at this team with the skill that they have, with this new offensive system, Justin Fuente and the quarterback, Gerard Evans, they're going to win their fair share of games. And McKenzie goes into the end zone. Virginia Tech scores a touchdown for the first time since the first quarter. You know, the fumbles, Kirk, tonight we've harped on them because it's, it's been the biggest part of the game. The fumbles in the first two weeks for Virginia Tech are bad, but losing nine of the ten, having none of them bounce back to you, having they right. hardly any of them right. bounce out of bounds or whatever, some right. of that's bad luck, too, that you think won't last. You know, right. that sooner or later, they're not going to put the ball on the ground as much as they have in the first two games. No, but I, I, I mean, with, with a Bud Foster defense that's going to be better than they were a year ago, you can, you can already see that. Mm -hmm. and, and with a quarterback that's going to give you a chance to compete in, in their division. He's going to, Evans, speaking of, is going to continue to get better. Bud Foster told us yesterday that Justin Fuente told him because of the way they play offense, you, you don't have to be perfect on defense anymore. Bud sort of left and said, he doesn't know me very well yet. <laughs> I mean, Bud's always going to want perfection. He's going to want better than they've seen his spots tonight. But the, the fumbles have put them in really difficult spots at different times. Three and a half minutes to go, just under that. Tennessee with a... 21 point lead and here is Bud Foster. We talked earlier about his decision to stay after Frank Beamer left and Justin Fuente took over and among power five teams since 1996 they have set the pace in negative plays or positive plays from a defensive standpoint. Sacks, the interceptions, the lunch pail mentality. Lunch pail defense, I'm sure most know the story. Had it since the mid 90s. They Put the mission inside and weekly keys and goals and when yep. they get big road wins little pieces of the turf and they carry this old workers lunch pail around to remind them of the mentality that they want to have on defense and it's one that's served virginia tech extraordinarily well as long as foster's been the defensive coordinator and certainly will as we move into this justin fuente era in tennessee with 328 left we'll take over on the 25 after the touchback 
Tonight over on ESPN, after the Virginia-Oregon game, Sports Center at night, John Butchacross, John Anderson, they'll have all the college football highlights, plus the U.S. Open, Major League Baseball, and all the latest NFL news and more. Sports Center at night, it's on ESPN, and you can watch Sports Center at night on the Watch ESPN and ESPN app. Now, Tennessee, Joshua Dobbs night is finished, Quentin Dormady, is coming in. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, Kirk. Nothing against Dormady, who is a talented young quarterback and has a bright future. But after Sharon Jones put on the show on the sideline, I was I was kind of rooting for him to get a snap or two here. And 13 got him riled up when things weren't going well. Yeah, he did. Showed a little bit of emotion there. There he is. He's been talking the whole night. Send a. Dr. Jerry Punch over there to tell Butch we want to see Sharon take a snap or two here. Well, you know, we joke about it, but a teammate who's comfortable enough, even though he's not playing, to challenge his teammates and exhort them and then root for them when things start going well, that's that's what you look for. Butch Jones talks a lot about, about family and understanding his players' personalities and how they can affect one another and so forth. And, Sometimes you can affect your teammates even when you're not the star of the team remember, at the time. I remember when Jameis Winston was redshirting and E.J. Manuel was a starting quarterback. There was no chance that Jameis would ever get on the field. And during when the offense would come over to the sidelines, he was in their face and, and like he ended up doing when he became the starter. But he was in their face challenging them and more than E.J. Manuel. It just wasn't E.J. Manuel's personality to, to do that as, as much as Jameis. Jameis did it Labor Day night at halftime, too, when he, he came back to he did. watch the Seminoles play against Ole Miss. Glad to see that Dormany got the memo about working that play clock. As Tennessee winds out, final minute 50 of this battle at Bristol, and they're going to get their second win of the year. Stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up after the game. Cassidy Hubbard will have that. Wild finishes. TCU and Arkansas was a barn burner. BYU and Utah. And of course, the game we've talked about a couple of times. Central Michigan beating Oklahoma State on a most controversial call. Jalen Hurd, 22 carries, 99 yards tonight. Hard running for Tennessee. Now, even though today was a quiet day as far as marquee matchups, ne next week we get back into, uh, into some great, great games in college football. We've told you college game day is going to Louisville for Florida State and the Cardinals. Alabama goes on the road to Ole Miss, Ohio State and Oklahoma. And it just goes to show you how with game day, you never know where you're going to go. Right. We all got together in early August, and we thought that third week, it was like, wow. I mean, is it Alabama, Ole Miss? Is it Ohio State, Oklahoma? Is it Stanford, USC? Is it Michigan State, Notre Dame? I don't think one person said, no, no, no. Hey, don't forget about that Florida State Louisville game. And now here we are. Can't wait to go there. Has the Bear chimed in yet to say that he had it on his radar for the state of Louisville? No, it might have been number seven on the list. Yeah, that's true. But Louisville has been electric in the first oh, he's couple of weeks. Of Lamar Jackson. Great town, too. Go to no every, every year for the Derby. Look forward to getting there for sure. It's been a great trip to Bristol as well started off much better than it finished for Justin Fuente and Tennessee roars away with a 45 to 24 win as the final seconds tick off here in front of the largest crowd ever to see a college football game better than 156,000 I believe the official count was 156 990 Josh Dobbs Tennessee look a little bit more like what was expected in the preseason with a dominant performance from the second quarter on taking advantage of every opportunity and playing much better up front Dobbs made plays both with his feet and through the air victorious coaches Butch Jones he's with Sam Ponder coach eight straight wins for the first time since 1998 what does that mean to your program well it's just another win and it puts us at 2-0 and we'll get ready 
to go for another week. But again, it's been a remarkable turnaround for this football program, and everyone is really invested in it. And we have to keep this thing going. This individual right here in our first recruiting class really helped change the culture of Tennessee football and get us back to where we need to be. But we made a lot of mistakes tonight that we have to correct as we continue to improve as a football team. You mentioned turnaround, and I immediately thought of this game. What is the difference between the team we saw in the first quarter and the way you finished up tonight? I think we woke up a little bit, and this team is learning how to have intensity for 60 minutes, and we're still not there yet. But obviously the turnover by the defense and then a big play and then obviously a big touchdown pass from him as well. So we're going to enjoy this tonight. Thanks, Coach. Let's talk to you, QB. Josh, big night for you. What's up? I'm not used to getting that one. All right. Uh, you, you set a record tonight, most rushing yards ever all-time by a Tennessee quarterback. What enabled you to run the ball the way you were able to tonight? Really just the O-line. You know, they dominated the line of scrimmage from the beginning of the game. We started off a little slow, but, you know, our defense did a great job having our back, putting us in positive situations, and then we were able to capitalize. But, you know, our tempo really played a big part, and we were able to own the line of scrimmage. Wait a second, though, Josh. You said your, your O-line dominated from the beginning. Let's be honest. There were some early struggles. How were they able to get it together tonight? There was, but we knew that coming in. You know, they, we had, we're playing aggressive defense so we talked about we had to be patient with the explosives that was a big thing coming into this game we knew our time would come and when we had the plays out there we just had to go out and make plays like we did tonight i'm sure you haven't been asked about this much but we had your guy sharon jones on camera a lot tonight because he was the most vocal guy on the sideline he was getting after your old line yeah. too what what's he saying to you guys out there he's the most energized guy on the sideline that's, a, that's my little brother and i always tell him you know bring my energy for me and keep me going throughout the game that's what he does. He, he's motivating me, pushing the offense, doing everything, always going. You know, he, he might not play, but he definitely makes an impact on the sideline with his attitude, and that definitely helps us a lot. Last thing for you, this environment. I mean, we saw the fireworks, 156,000 people. What was it like to play in a game like this that's never been done before? Absolutely insane. You know, I remember coming to Tennessee my freshman year, and, you know, talking about this game, I saying, you know, you'll be a senior starting at the Bristol and everything that's leading up, how we've turned around as a team and the position we're in this year. And, you know, there was, there was, there was definitely a circle around this game for sure. And it was an amazing atmosphere, a great turnout by our fans and, you know, 156,000, that's a lot of people. And a great finish for the Vols. Congratulations, Josh. Thanks. Thank, thank you. All right, Samantha, 45-24 the final. And it has been a really spectacular weekend. 20 years in the making to put together this game. The Bristol Motor Speedway and all of the people who organized this event, the officials from both schools, did a magnificent job, created a great atmosphere all the way from the start of game day through the end of the game tonight, Kirk. Yeah, it has been a special week. And I think the players are enjoying themselves after, after a big win. And even Jones down there. And, ever imagine he'd have a camera in his face walking off the field here at the Battle of Bristol after not taking one snap but the emotions of the game he helped turn it around and that was the difference you heard coach tell Sam we woke up well they woke up because of a Virginia Tech fumble when they were up 14 to nothing it just it was like flipping a coin it changed the game next play is a fade in the end zone Juwan J uh, Jones makes a nice play for a touchdown and or Jennings Jennings makes right. a nice play for a touchdown and that was it. That turned the game around. Yeah, the toughest guy on the team. They, they made a tough play yeah. to help get him going. And then every loose ball, Tennessee was quicker to it. They got the fumbles. They took advantage of every opportunity they got. And you expect teams sometimes to be finished products in the beginning. We know they grow over the course of the season, and Tennessee took a step in the right direction tonight, finishing off Virginia Tech by three touchdowns. Tonight's game was produced by Bill Bunnell and directed by Jeff Evers, just capping off a wonderful weekend, a wonderful night in Bristol. Largest crowd ever to see a college football game, and it wasn't just a game, it was an event here in Thunder Valley, known for tough, hard-nosed racing, and we saw plenty of hard-nosed football tonight between these two proud programs, but it was Tennessee making the clutch plays behind their veteran quarterback, Joshua Dobbs, and they come out of Bristol with a victory. Time now for the Ford wrap-up. Let's go. To